min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina man yahdihi Allahu fala mudilla lahu wa man yudlil fala hadiya lahu wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu salatun wa salam ala rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa man salaka bi manhajihi ila yawmiddin wa tabbi bi iman assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi and adorations are due to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the lord of the universe the compassionate the loving and forbearing one the acceptor of repentance the source of goodness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful, is so merciful, out of his mercy, he made for you, you the night and the day, rest in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has favored you and I with his blessing, out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you, good health, sight, hearing, nourishment, clean air, children, wealth, and countless others subhanallah la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-aliy al-azim allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so great allahu akbar kabira uh we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his blessing upon the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam his household his family and those who remain on his clear path to the day of resurrection I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to count you and I among those who will remain on the clear path. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not withdraw you and I from the ibadah. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, as, uh, the, to serve as the continuation of our previous uh, discussion, that we last week we talk about uh at tahara purification uh we said we need to know about our islamic what what islam asks us to do what islam said we should don't do what we need to do before we serve allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is compulsory on every single worshiper of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to know this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Tahreem, verse 6, بَعْدَ عَنَا قُلَ عَوْذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Allah says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قُوْ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَهْلِيكُمُ النَّارَةِ وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةِ عَلَيْهَا مَلَائِكَةٌ غِلَاظٌ شِدَادٌ لَا يَعْصُونَ اللَّهَ مَا أَمَرَهُمْ وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, was admonished us in this ayah. Ya ayu al-lazina amanu. Oh you believers. Oh you that acclaim that you believe in Allah. Who anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Save your soul. Save your, your family's souls from air fire. The air fire that we we're going to use to inflame the fire of the uh, the of Allah, the fire that we are talking about, the inflammation of it is human being and stone. Alayha malaikatun ghilafun shidadun. And it is surrounded by the giant and strong angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This angel that we are talking about, their attribute is that they don't disobey Allah. They obey the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If this is clear, if this is clear to you and I, it means upon us to guide ourselves, to guide our family from the fire of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In a form with this, how to guide ourselves is to know about our religion. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in one of his hadiths, says, Talabu la ilmi faridotun ala kulli muslimin. To seek for knowledge, it is compulsory on every Muslim. Male or female, it is compulsory on everybody to seek knowledge. The knowledge that we are talking about is the knowledge that we need to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
the compulsory knowledge that we need to serve to worship our Lord. This knowledge is very important in our life. So therefore, we're going to continue on Islamic jurisprudence that we started last week, inshallah. Uh, so our today's topic uh, is going to be Ahkam al haidi wa nifas wa istihado which means the menstruation, postnatal bleeding, and the irregular bleeding. This topic, we really need it in our life. Our wives need it. Our daughters need this in their life. They need to know this. Even the men also, we all need this in our life. If Allah say men should protect his family, who are the family of men? Then his wife and his children. Male and, male and female. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell the women to protect their family from the fire, who are the family of women? Then our wife, our husband, and our children. So it is upon you and I to understand uh, the Islamic law, the Islamic jurisprudence. So therefore, we're going to start, inshallah, without wasting time. Al Haid, Al Haid, which uh, uh, it means menstruation, women's period. And Logatan, Logatan in Arabic terms, Faubimana Sayalanu Ashay in Wajarayanuhu, flowing of things in body, flowing of things, that it means by hide that is what hide means wa fi shari'i damu yurakhihi rahimu al-mar'ati ba'da bulughiha fi awqat ma'tada the scholars they try to come with the definition of uh hide like one of our scholars rahimahullah ta'ala anhu sheikh saleh ufaymin said Al Haj, it means natural blood that is not caused due to illness or injury, which flows from the furthermost part of the woman's womb while she is in a state of good health at a specific time. So, which means this blood is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for women. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that caused women to have this blood uh, days of the uh, day, uh, some with this in their a month, this a month for them to have this blood is a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them. Allah has favor women with this. So this blood is a dirty blood that will flow out from their body. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown his mercy upon uh, women, particularly at this point. Our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala said in one of her hadith that she narrated, she says, Ni'man nisa'u nisa'u la ansari lam yakun lam yamnahunna ala hayahu an yatafaqahana fi din. She says, the women of ansari, they are the best. May Allah be pleased with them. The shyness doesn't prevent them from learning what is going to benefit them in their religion. They don't allow the shyness to prevent them from having a proper understanding towards their religion. So after the definition of this blood, we already understand what we call height. Height is Arabic term. Now let's go to the Sifa to Dam al height the characteristics of the blood of height, the features of the blood of height, the menstruation. Number one, it has four characteristics. Number one, it's a thick blood. Number one. Number two, dark red. One of the features of the damn height, dark red not like the regular blood that flow in our body. Number three, this blood has an offensive odor. Number four, clot. Clot 
coagulate solid so those are the four features of damalhide the menstrual period uh, blood then we have another blood that comes from women which we call is the hado this is the hado in english terms it means irregular bleeding this, this is the harder is a chronic bleeding that is red in color the same characteristic of this blood is as normal as a regular blood that flows in our body the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to Fatima bint Abi Hubesh radiallahu ta'ala anha when she asked the messenger of Allah she said he said to her this is the hard the irregular bleeding is from a blood vein not usual menstruation so when you re when your re menstrual period begins give up performing prayer hadith uh, was reported by Bukhari and Muslim so we understand in this hadith that we have a blood that is different from the uh, menstrual, uh, uh, menstrual, uh, menstrual blood, the menstruation blood. In this hadith, it is clear to us that we have a blood that they call dambolist hado, irregular bleeding. Now, the characteristics of the irregular bleeding. We need to know it also so to be able to differentiate between the irregular bleeding and the uh, menstrual bleeding. Dammu al-hayd yumayizu ani dammu al-istihada bi arba'i alamat. This dammu al-istihada, the irregular bleeding, can be distinguished with the dammu al-hayd with four characteristics number one launum is color for hide as what while is the hard ahmar the blood of the menstrual the menstrual blood is dark red why the blood of is the hard the irregular bleeding is red pure red number one number two are consistency for damal height the menstrual blood is thick and heavy why the blood of istihada the irregular bleeding is thin number three out of the features of the uh what distinguish between the damoli height and damoli istihada aroiha the odor for damoli al height Smell. The menstrual blood has an offensive odor. Why the blood of istihada does not? Because it comes from an ordinary vein. Number four, which is the last. At-tajamud. Fadamul haid la yatajamud. Fadamul istihada yatajamud. Atajamut, it means clothing. The menstrual blood does not clot. Why? When it comes out. The menstrual blood does not clot when it comes out of the body. Why the blood of irregular bleeding clots? Because it comes from a vein. Now, a woman that has this uh, a period. What uh, the has this is the hard irregular bleeding. What does she needs to do when it comes to solat? Tatawadu likuli solat. A woman that has this, she's going to pray and make ablution for every single solat that she wants to pray. And we we have uh, mentioned the uh, the difference between irregular bleeding and the menstrual blood. So if women has this irregular bleeding, 
So she has to make ablution for every single solar she wants to observe. She cleans herself and she make ablution before she performs solar. She doesn't need to do ruslo because that blood is irregular bleeding. It is not the uh, the period. Be there yet to see no height. When does a child, a female child, start a period? Medical doctors or other uh, those who are in fields, some people will tell you that at the age of nine, and when a woman over fifty something, she enters the menopause. For Islamically, Islam don't have specific age for women to start a period. It depends on on the on the nature of women. Scholar just choose uh, the age nine to be as the like uh, uh, in between, or to be the the age that we uh, we used to guide ourselves. But that is not true. The women can start a period before age of nine. The girls can start their period before age of nine. So if she, this happens and she, she sees the, all the criteria, the features that we mentioned, the four features, that means she has uh, started a period. But if she didn't see any of these, uh, if she doesn't see any of these characteristics, that means it is not uh, the uh, menstrual blood. We're clear on this. Now, when is the duration, the duration of the menstrual blood, the menstruation of women? It depends on the nature of women. Some women can have their own six days, some five days, four days, three days, seven days, eight days, nine days. But the scholars, they all agree that mo most of them said it is not possible for women to have a period over 15 days. Anything that comes after 15 days within a period cycle, by a period of time, that is uh, irregular blood. So she will start salat and do other ibadat that Islam uh, commands her to do. But if the woman have this period within 40 days, uh, within 40 days, she see on a, a period time. Now, what is the minimum time that women can have a period? Also, women, we don't have a specific hadith that talk about this, that say after three days, uh, the women, that's the minimum. So we, even the scholars say it's possible for women to have a, a period for only a day. And the doctors, are, are, they, have, they confirm that, that there's some women, they have it. So it's, it is rare, but it happened. So if this is the case, so we don't have a specific day uh, duration, uh, specific duration for women for the period time of women. So the maximum is 15, but the minimum it could be a day, like uh, we said earlier. Damala Haidul Hamil, a woman that is uh, a pregnant woman. Is it possible for a pregnant woman to have uh, menstruation? Some scholars say it's not possible. Some scholars say, yes, it's possible. The doctors, some doctors confirm that it's possible with our research that it is possible for women, a pregnant woman to have a period while she is pregnant. So in this case, if this woman that has a, a, a the, the a pregnant woman as a as a period. So if she see any of these characteristics that we mentioned, that's a height, a period of time. But if she doesn't see any of these characteristics, so it means she's clean. Now, hukmu sufrati wal kudra. Women sometimes they see the yellowish and brownish. 
if they are about to uh or when they're about to cure from the this hide if they see this brownish and yellowish uh, if this brownish and yellowish comes during the times of the uh, menstrual period it means they are still in their period they must not uh, do ghuslu or do any ibadah that has been restricted them from. But if this brownish and yellowish comes after the woman has been clean and it doesn't come in our days of period, that brownish and yellowish, it is not, we will disregard it. Like our uh, hadith of uh, one of our mothers, radiallahu ta'ala, and Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala, and I say, uh, we don't uh, consider this as period whenever we see it. In the hadith narrated by Umm Atiyah, radiallahu ta'ala aniya, kunna la nu'idu as-sufra, as-sufra wal-qudra, wal-qudra ba'da tuhuri shay'an. She said we disregard, we don't regard this brownish and yellowish as uh, period after a woman has been purified. So therefore, it is not uh, important for women to do ablution or make ghuslu if she see the after a purification, after she has, she, uh, she has been purified from a, a, a period. Now, how does the woman know that she is clean? from a period. Number one, a woman can know that her period has ended by two things. Number one, al-bayda, al al the white discharge which comes from the womb to show that the period is over. The white discharge that comes from the womb to show that the period is over. When a, whenever a woman sees this, that means she is in pure state. She's in state of purity. She's pure. Number two, complete dryness. If a woman does not have this white discharge, she has to be expecting uh, the complete dryness. So whenever she sees that she's dry, that means she is clean. She can perform ibadah and do any other thing that Islam commands women to do. Now let's go into anifas. Anifas, postnatal bleeding or postpartum bleeding. Manat nifas, huwa dammu yuraqihi rahmi bisabab al-wiladati imma maha aw ba'daha aw qablaha bi yawmin aw falafati ma'at talaq. It is the, the blood that flows from the uterus after child bath, regardless of whether the child survives or not. So if a woman gives birth but does not see any blood, the ruling of nefas, when does not apply to her, there is no obligatory bath due upon her. And it, it does not break her uh, fasting if a woman gives birth but does not see any blood. If this possible, so that means she doesn't need to do nefas. Mudatu, the length, the duration of the and nefas, how long, the maximum, the minimum. Ajma Ajma Alul Ilimi min Ashabi Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa min Badim Ala Anna Nufasa Tari U Salata Arbain Yawman Illa Antura Tuhura Illa Antura Antara Tuhura Kabla Dalik Fatav Tasili Watu Salli Kala Ibn Kudama Rahimahullah Tala Ani Imam Ibn Kudama said in this, uh, the hadith of the, the, the Imam Tirmidhi said this, Imam Ibn Qudama reported this. Uh, Imam uh, Tirmidhi uh, reported this, Afwan. The scholars, they agree that a woman, after 40 days, that women give birth, and she still see blood, she has to start solar that blood will be regarded as irregular bleeding. The maximum days for women to have this 
whose metal blading is 40 days. But, but the minimum days of this, no minimum duration for this. Whenever a woman sees that she's pure, with these two signs that we mentioned earlier, dryness or white discharge, so women should start praying salat and do other ibadat. If a woman see stop bleeding within 20 days after giving birth, 15 days, 25, 27, 30 days, any days within 40 days, and it could be 10 days also, depending on the nature of women. If this happens and she see this complete dryness, then she can observe salat. But what about if women she see in a uh, uh, the the nefas period, which is 40, 40 days, if this stop on the twentieth, for instance, and continue on the twenty second, that means she's still on a nefas. So far as uh, she's still in the window frame of that uh, days of her uh, postnatal bleeding. Now, okay, if it happened that a woman gave birth and he doesn't see any of this uh, uh, blood at all, let's assume that she gave birth and she doesn't see any of this uh, blood that comes out from her body. Uh, the scholar said, That means she will make ablution. She prays the lad and no ruslu, no ritual bath uh, uh, for her, saying she didn't see any blood. If this happened. Also, to remind us again, the same sign of purification for this uh, menstrual, uh, the menstruation also is the same thing with the nefas. White discharge complete dryness in the sense that there is no trace of blood or yellowish or brownish discharge. So if this happens, that means the woman, uh, the woman is pure to perform a blush, uh, to uh, perform salat and do other ibadat. Now the blood after a miscarriage, if a woman has a miscarriage, may Allah save us from this. And those people that this has happened to them, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, bless them and uh, uh, with, the, with, the, with the good child that will be the goodness of their eyes, inshallah. If the miscarriage fetus is 80 days or less, the blood is considered is the hard, it's irregular blood. And if it is 90 days old or more, the blood of nefas, the fetus should be examined. If it is between 80 to 90 days, if it has the shape of human, then the blood is of nefas. And if it's not, then the blood is of is the heart, which is irregular bleeding. So if a woman have, have, the, the, have miscarriage and has above these days, 90 days, so uh, that means she's still on a postnatal bleeding uh, time. That blood that comes up. But if it is lesser than that, and the part of the body of the baby has not been formed and it's lesser than uh, these days that we mentioned 80 days that means uh she's not having a an a nefas now al ahkam al mutarattibatu ala al haid wa nefas the rules the rules on this haid and nefas if it happens to women what well, shall we expect from the women to do? And what are we expecting for their, from their husband or from the, uh, the men also as well? Awalan as yahrum ala lehaidi wa nufsa as It is forbidden for a menstrual, a woman that is in a period to do salat. It is haram for a menstruating woman to pay both obligatory and nafila salat and if they does that if they pray that salat it is invalid Allah doesn't need it reading Quran Quran 
اختلف آراي العلماء في قراءة الحائد للقرآن ما بين محر محرم ومجوز. The scholar, the dispute, and the women that is having a, a, a postnatal bleeding or a menstrual bleeding, can she read Quran or she cannot read the Quran? Some scholar says she cannot read the Quran. Some scholars say she can read the Quran since there is no concrete evidence direct from the Quran or from the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All the evidence that it brings to justify that it is not uh, allowed for women to uh, read the Quran, it is not direct evidence. So therefore, I'm with, with the scholar that says women can read the Quran if they are in, in a period or in a, in a fast, but with the precaution, they should make sure that they are, they are clean, they clean their, their hands before they take this Quran. Because if the woman, if you say that she don't read the Quran, maybe they are used to that, that they, we have some women that within three days or four days, they say they finish the Quran. And we have some women that they are teachers, they teaching, uh, people to read the Quran, and we have some students also that they are still learning. So therefore, if you stop them from reading Quran, that we have the side effect that we affect their knowledge in one way or the other. So therefore, it is permissible for women to carry the Quran. But if she can carry the half of the Quran, uh, I mean the juzu. The Quran has a different juzu, so she can, if she needs from juzu one, she can take from it. If she needs from juzu two, she take from uh, juzu two. That will even make it easy. And that will make it, uh, the, the, uh, uh, that shows that she respects the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well, if she doesn't carry the whole Quran. But if she carries the whole Quran, since she has no option, not turn around. Some scholars say she can wear gloves also to avoid touching the Quran with the blood uh, hands or the dirty Hence, uh, it is allowed for women to carry. And also, she can do afkar, read the book of the hadith, book of uh, uh, fiqh, Islamic jurisprudence, and other books. And also, she can listen to the Quran. Allah Ta'ala Alam. Now, fasting. A woman that is bleeding or that is on a uh, postnatal bleeding period. They cannot fast. They cannot fast while they are in this moment. Islam doesn't uh, command them to fast while they are in this moment. But after they stop bleeding, they will fast. Another three, number uh, four things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbidden for women that is having this blood. Tahrim al jima. It is forbidden for women to have intercourse. Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 222. When you say, Anil Mahidi, Kul Hua Adha Fa'tazilu Nisa'a Fil Mahid. They were asking you, they were, they were asking you, what is the what is Al Mahid, the menstruation? Kul tell them, oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hua Adha Fa'tazilu Nisa'a. It is discomfort. It is something that hurts. It is something that is not okay. So therefore, stay away from women during this period. You don't go to the women while they are during this period. And also, there's another hadith report, uh, from the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they ask him, he said, It's now kulla shay'in illa nikah. When they ask, this uh, question relating to women that is having a period or a postnatal bleeding, they say she can do anything possible with her husband except nikah. Nikah there de means al jima to have intercourse, but for her husband to hug her, kiss her, and do any other thing, it is permissible in Islam. And Islam even prefer you doing that for your women not to avoid your women or abandon her, not to act like. Uh, the Jew, that whenever there are women are on this uh, uh, the period, or whenever there are women are in the in the in the state of impurity, they abandon them. Now, 
some scholar says, what about a man, a man that purposely sleep with his wife during a period or a postnatal bleeding? Or the woman also that she's the one that is willing to do so with her husband? Some scholars say, first of all, before I go to the word, some scholars say, it is forbidden in Islam. If anyone come with this, he or she has to repent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tawbatan nasuha, total repent. Repentance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he, should, he or she should vow that, uh, she, uh, he or, uh, that, it, that will not happen again. If a woman comes to his wife during a period, or if a woman also that do so. But if a woman has been forced to do so, though that will not happen, but let's assume that that happened because some 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 unserious men, it is the men's fault then. So it's the men that we go repent. But women also try to stop him from that. But if it is both of them, they are all, they are all, they are both committed. They are, they are both committed that sin. If that happened from both, then some scholars say there are, there is penalty on them if they do so also. With the hadith that they reported that uh, if a man comes to his wife during a period, she should pay uh, uh, the dirham, a uh, dinar, dinar, which is like 4.15 grams of gold. If you multiply it for today's market, maybe it could be close to uh, maybe over $200. They say a man should pay this for charity, sodako, for her to uh, go goes beyond the limitation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if this happened from man. And if this happened from both of them, they both pay this money. And the scholar also bring another point there that if this happened while the woman is on a first stage, I mean, the state that the blood is see very thick. So it means the, the, the man is going to pay full dinner, which is uh, uh, almost the amount I mentioned. But if the woman has been purified, but she hasn't taken shower, some scholars said that she the, the husband is going to, before, she hasn't taken shower before her husband come to her. So he's going to pay half of dinner, which is going to be over $100. Some scholars said that. But some scholars say no, it is not, uh, nothing is required from men or from women that do this thing because the hadith that they brought, it is not strong enough. It is from uh, uh, Ibn Abbas. Fazal hadith, Mawkufan. Hadith is from Ibn Abbas. But let's assume that it's from Ibn Abbas, we can still use it. But Alakul Hal is serious Muslim. We avoid this thing uh, uh, to happen while uh, 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 his wife is in a uh, is in a in a period time. Number three, another thing that women cannot do while she is in this state, at tawaf it is forbidden for women to tawaf sakumambilating around the Kaaba, the house of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in Saudi. It is not permissible with the hadith of the Prophet to our mother. Qala, if Ali ma yafalu al hajj, gayru alla tatawafi bili bayti hata tatahari. Do everything that the people that go to hajj do, except to not do tawaf, to not circumambulate the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, in this hadith, it's clear to us that a woman that goes for hajj, that go to Hajj or for Umrah, and she has a period. Islam says she can do all other ibadat that she needs to do in Hajj. For instance, she can do the um, uh, hiram to put on a garment, on a white garment to do the. Uh, Sofa wal marwa to go to Sofa marwa and other ibadat that is uh, compulsory on her to do except to not tawaf uh, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Then, if that woman is living nearby uh, Kaaba, the scholar said she should go home and come back after she is pure, she is clean from this, then come back and do a tawaf. But what about the women that travel all over the country and her uh, uh, departure time has been fixed and she knows that she cannot be clean till she will leave, till she leaves the country, the Kaaba, the uh, the, the, the Kaaba. So what is she going to do? The scholar say she should make sure that she tie her body very well. I she clean herself very well and do tawaf of also also of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala because that fall under necessity. Adoruratu to be holy ma'avurat. The necessity always uh, make the forbidden thing permitted or permissible in Islam. Now, number five. But if it is tawaf al-wada, we have another tawaf that we do if you go for a hajj or, uh, or umrah, tawaf uh, for hajj, the tawaf of living. If it is this, uh, the woman is in a period and she hasn't do this tawaf, she should forget about this tawaf and go because this one is not uh, compulsory on her. al maqsuf al-masjid. Al-Makafufil-Masjid, women to sit in the masjid, women that is on this uh, state, that she is not pure. Can she stay in the masjid? The scholars say it is not permissible for women to stay in the masjid with the hadith of Umm Atiyah radiallahu ta'ala anha, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told her, she said, say me to Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say me to Nabiya, صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول يخرج العواتق والذوات الخدور والحيد. She said the president said go for Eid Eid the feast go there to the to to the praying ground. The women that they are they are free. And those women that they are having uh, uh, excuse, like the postnatal bleeding and all that excuses, while hide, and the women that are having a period, they should go to praying ground. But they should avoid on the playing ground spot. They should just stay around the playing ground or behind the playing ground. So that's the, uh, the evidence that they bring. So therefore, it is not allowed for women to stay in the masjid. But some scholars say, Some scholars say women are allowed. They can go in, in, into the masjid. They can stay there if it is very important for them to stay in the masjid, even though they are on a period. So some scholars say they can go there if they have a, uh, a mission, something important for them to do. If they have it, they can stay in the masjid, nothing wrong for women to stay in the masjid. Particularly if the masjid has wings, the masjid have um, the, uh, the hallway or the balcony, so they can stay there. And if it doesn't have this uh, balcony hallway, they can stay in the masjid also if it is needed for them to be in the masjid. At-talaq. Yahrum ala zawji an yutalliqa zawjata wa yahahid. It is forbidden for a man to, to divorce their wives while they are in these states. With the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah At-talaq verse 1. Allah says, Ya ayu an nabi ida talak tum an nisa'a fa taliku hunna la iddatihin. If you are divorcing your wife, you want to divorce them, divorce them at their uh, period at either time that they will be fit, they will, uh, they will, uh, they will, after they, do, they are done with their period, their idda, the period that they have to stay at home before they can uh, go to their mother's house or their husband that they want to marry after they've been divorced. So it is haram for men to divorce their wife. 
But guys, one issue there. What about if the man divorces his wife and she she's and in the state of uh, uh impure impurity, impure that she's not pure, and a man divorces his wife. We have said that, that a man cannot divorce his wife, but if that happens from man, can we say that divorce is uh is real or is not real? Some scholars say if it happened between them like that, between husband and wife, the divorce is real. We say, yes, the divorce is real, even though the man commits sin, but the divorce is legitimate. Now, we have some time that women, a man can divorce the woman if they are doing the height. يَجُوزُ الطَّلَاقُ الْحَيْدِ فِي الْحَالَاتِ الْآتِيَ إِذَا طَلَّقُهَا قَبْلَ الدُّخُولِ قَبْلَ الدُّخُولِ بِهَا if a man divorces his wife before he consummates or they comes together, so this one is legitimate, it is permissible. Before consummation, so if this happens, it is legitimate. Then if the woman is pregnant, if the woman is pregnant, the pregnant woman, if they divorce her while she is pregnant, also, uh, it is legitimate. And also, if the woman seek for color separation from her husband, particularly if it is in a state that is uh, very difficult, scholars also say uh, the talag in this situation also, it is permissible. And also, yajuzu aqdu nekai al al-hayd wa nefaz. It is permissible to have uh, to do nikah, to do marriage while the woman is in a, a menstruation period or a postnatal bleeding menstruation period. So women can uh, in a menstruation, women can uh, can um, can seek for marriage, and it is legitimate. Now. Some question come along this topic. They ask, is it permissible for women to take a birth control pills? A birth control pills. Can the woman take this? Yes, the woman can take the birth control pills with these two conditions. Allah yukhsha dararu alayha. The number one condition is that it mu she must be sure that this pill will not harm her, will not hurt her. If this pill is going to hurt the woman, it is not allowed. Number two, the permission has to come from her husband before she can take these birth control pills. I, if the woman doesn't want pregnancy, that moment she can take it but the other one that to take out the tube totally or to tie the tube excuse me uh that one is not permissible permissible in islam but to take precaution or pills that can delay women for having pregnancy if she has a reason behind that it is allowed for her to do so and also another question came up with this uh topic can a woman take pills to control administration. Yes, it is allowed for women to take pills to control administration, but with conditions, two conditions. Number one, these pills that she wants to take to not prevent her from ibadah, such as fasting. A woman should not take the, uh, the, pills, uh, uh, the pills to control administration, so to avoid fasting that she wants to bring a menstruation earlier during the Ramadan so that she will avoid to fast. That is haram in Islam, number one condition. Number two, that also the permission has to come from her husband that she wants to uh, take this uh, pill to delay or to, or to delay or to bring a menstruation, uh, to delay or to bring it early. But if she has not married, 
that means she is free, particularly uh, she, uh, if she, uh, uh, it is being governed by uh, a parent. Now, Ujubal Ghuslu, and it is compulsory on women that have this postnatal bleeding and the uh, menstruation to take Ghuslu. Ghuslu is the ritual bath that women would take when they are in this uh, stage. And also, it's the same thing that, as the bath that men take for Juma, for Eid, and other. Islamic ritual bath. Uh, Janaba also as well is the same thing. So this Ruslu in the hadith narrated by uh, reported by Imam Bukhari, it is it is very simple. The Sunnah one is, is to first wash hands. After washing the hands, then we wash our private parts. After washing our private parts, then we make normal ablution with the intention, normal ablution with the intention. After the normal ablution that we uh, uh, we do, in one narration, he said, you can leave your leg without washing it. Another narration said, you wash your leg, your feet. Then after that, pour water on your head to wash your head. Make sure that the water go deep in your here then after that you watch the right side the right side then to the left side then the entire body this is the sunnah one but we have another one that is very easy and it also it is accepted if anyone comes with this which is to just wash the hands wash the private body then just make the normal ablution, then pour water on your body entirely. Then you are done. You are pure uh, you, you, in Ruslu. But in a state that men doesn't see, or women that have men that have junuba, or women that have junuba, or women that have postnatal bleeding or uh, menstrual period, menstrual bleeding. Excuse me. So this woman and she doesn't see. Uh, water to make ablution, to make ruslu. Islamically, she is going to do tayammum. She is going to do tayammum, tayammum to heat the pans on the surface of the earth, dust or any other substance, sand, a clay, uh, sand, then dust it together and rub his face and his palm. That's how to make ablution. So in this case, woman will do tayamon if she uh, she's in a state that she doesn't see water. So she's going to do tayamon to uh, uh, to represent the ruslu. So if she has done this, she is clean. She can do any other ibadah also. She can do any ibadah in Islam, any other ibadah. And she is if she go home or if she see water, she can use it to clean herself later if she wants. But tayamon as represent uh, the ruslu in the state that women or men didn't see ablution. And in the case of women, it is not compulsory for women to untie their uh, hair, to, to untie their braids. So if they are braiding their hair, it's not compulsory for them to untie it. Uh, they should just make sure that the water goes deep into their hair. That is Islamic uh, principle. Uh, on the taking uh, bath. Uh, inshallah, we're going to stop here for now. Inshallah, uh, inshallah, in our next city, uh, we come with another uh, topic. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it as an act of ibadah from you and I. Uh, whichever we say that is right there from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and whichever we say that is wrong is from me. And shaitan, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive every one of us. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, guide every one of us. We come with the summarization of this topic. We don't go deep in details to come with the scholars' uh, argument because of time and because to make this uh, uh, topic 
go straight for us to understand. And we being flexible in some the area that we didn't see evidence on this. So we don't uh, too harsh on that. So we go to the, uh, the, the easiest one among the opinions of scholar that we see that is going to uh, be useful to Muslim since the religion of Islam uh, is built on mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yuridu bikum li yusra wa la yuridu bikum li usra. Allah wants mercy, Allah wants lenient softness for you. Allah doesn't want difficulty on you. Allah doesn't want something hard on you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our ibadah and forgive our shortcomings. Akulu kuli hadha, astaghfirullah li walakum. Subhanaka la umma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.